Uptown and happy Friday. I don't know about you, but this week for me was so incredibly awesome. On Wednesday night, we hosted our first ever Advent mini VBS right here at Sharptown. And it was so exciting to be able to see so many of our kids come through our doors and enter in to learn about the season of Advent. We took some time to talk about the gift of hope and how light can come out of the darkness. What thrill that hope can bring, especially to the weary world that we live in today. Advent is such a great time to reflect on the difference that a little baby can make in your life. So I hope that our daily messages will help you to find that time to reflect on Jesus this season. So this week we have taken some time to talk through the Old Testament prophecies that foretold the coming of Jesus Christ. I love reading prophecies um, because I think it really proves how amazing our God is. And it's just great evidence and proof um, that the Bible is true and that it really is God's word. So today we're going to dive into another Old Testament prophecy. This one comes from the book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 2. And it says this, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be a ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. This prophecy was written, written about 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. And it declares that Bethlehem will be the place that Jesus is born. This verse eliminates all other cities or towns. So why Bethlehem? Bethlehem was barely worth counting among the clans of Judah. It was an insignificant place, but God chose Bethlehem. Not the Bethlehem that Ben was talking about yesterday where he grew up, but the town of Bethlehem where Jesus would be born. The message translation translate the, translates this verse in a little bit of a different way, and it says this, but you, Bethlehem, David's country, the runt of the litter. From you will come the leader who will shepherd rule Israel. He'll be no upstart, no pretender. His family tree is ancient and distinguished. Bethlehem is the runt of the litter. Even our Christmas carol sings, O oh, little town of Bethlehem. No one wants to be called little. Growing up and being the youngest in my family, sometimes I heard the words, well, you're just too little. It's like we're saying Bethlehem was too little. But God chose to do something amazing there. The insignificance of Bethlehem, though, is outweighed by the great significance of the one who was born there. God chooses something small. He chooses the quiet, the out of the way, and does something that changes the world and all of history and eternity. So why God chooses Bethlehem so that no one can boast in their achievements, but only in the achievements of God? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 27 to 31 says this, but God chooses the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chooses the weak things of this world to shame the strong. God chooses the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. God takes 
the weakest, and he makes them the strongest. A little town of Bethlehem doesn't seem so little and insignificant anymore, just like Bethlehem. God can take our insignificance, and he can do amazing things through us in Christ Jesus. Another super fun fact about Bethlehem is this. The Hebrew word for Bethlehem means the house of bread. Can you think of any scripture that talks about bread? Actually, in John chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus declares, I am the bread of life. So Bethlehem becomes the home of the bread of life. I just think that's so cool. Bread that is essential to human existence and necessary for eternity. Without this bread, there is no hope. How incredible is that? That all of that was thought through with God. That's incredible. So the next time that you hear the Christmas carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, I hope it means something more to you. I hope it speaks to you about how the essential came from there and how God can take what is insignificant and make it significant. Sharptown, will you please pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for Fridays. We thank you for this Advent season and for the gift of hope. God, we thank you that you take things that seem insignificant and you can do significant things with them. God, we thank you for the ways that you were at work long before we were around, how you prepared the way and you chose the little town of Bethlehem. God, help us this season to remember how awesome and how great you are and to celebrate you every single day. We love you and it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, Sharptown, have a great day, and I will see you later.